good morning, a warm welcome everybody, both online and uh, here in the room with us. And thank you for joining us at this latest Hybrid Art Fest here in Morecambe, and I hope you agree. Uh, things have started very well, straightforward to find, apart from the fact there's no sign to say where the football ground actually is. Um, you have to look for the lights. Um, easy to park, and I think they've done really well with the first set of refreshments. So sorry for those of you who are online, but they are looking after us very well um, so far. I hope that grass grows, because they're going to have a difficult pitch next season otherwise. Um, so I'm Mark Gabe, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm director of the ARC Northwest Coast, which is what you've come to today. I'm professor of general practice at the University of Liverpool, and I work as an academic associate GP at Brownlow Health in Liverpool. Um, so here we are in the famous town, uh, which is famous for um, its association with Eric Morecambe and the statue. It's the home of the Shrimps, which is, as you can see, a local football club and a local delicacy. And it's also where Tyson Fury lives, and I'm not going to do the Tyson Fury joke, I'm sorry. So moving on, um, I've got some housekeeping. We're not expecting a fire alarm, so if you do hear a fire alarm, there will be an announcement which says, fire has been reported in the building, please leave the building immediately via the nearest exit. And if you do do that, please follow the green exit signs um, and uh, the fire assembly point is outside the front door and it's clearly marked. And a fire warden will appear to help. If you discover a fire, um, please operate a fire break glass panel on the exit route. Uh, do not try and tackle the fire. Um, as you can see, refreshments are outside and toilets are on that corridor as well. There are no life jackets under your seats and oxygen will not appear from the ceiling. So if you're online and you feel comfortable please, to do so, please do keep your cameras on and pop into the chat any comments as the day progresses and any questions so we can make sure you're part of the discussions. I will try and keep an eye on the chat um, while I'm chairing the session today. Uh, please raise your hand uh, using the hand um, emoji, uh, the symbol, uh, or wave your hand or write something in the chat, and I'll do my best to get you into the discussions. So, coastal communities are not homogenous, and each is shaped by its own unique history and culture. We're here in Morecambe to hear what people here want to tell us, and we want to act on that information from across the collaboration and beyond, across the other arcs and elsewhere. We realize how important it is to meet people where they and their communities are located, so it's a real pleasure to be here, and we haven't been to this part of uh, West Lancashire before, or Northwest Lancashire. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, probably shouldn't have said that under the uh, circumstances, we're on the run into a general election, and guidance provided by the government under these circumstances means we cannot talk about the planning for ARC 2 or specific government policy in any great detail and we should be very factual about health inequalities and not express opinions. This also means we will not be tweeting or using social media today, and I would encourage you not to mention us in your own tweets because they are watching, and we will get into trouble if lots of stuff comes up that isn't supposed to be being broadcast in the run-up to an election. Um, after the 4th of July, you can say what you like. <laughs> Thank you for your understanding. They are very strict about this, and we did have to make a special plea not to have the ArcFest cancelled. Lots of other uh, meetings run by the NIHR and the associate organisations have been postponed till after the election, at great cost to public coffers, as you can imagine. Despite this, I'm hoping today will provide an opportunity for the audience to hear about the research findings we have on health inequalities in the area of unplanned care, and on your tables and online chat uh, are some examples of local and national research that has been undertaken on health inequalities and services such as A&E. So do please feel free to browse those. Uh, we've also got the marketplace over here, which I want to draw attention to, which is where we, the themes in the ARC, will be presenting their work at lunchtime. And there'll be people sat behind those tables 
please do come and talk to us, find out what we're doing and how you can get involved if you're not already. Our speakers from across the region include frontline clinicians from many of our local trusts, including those in Morecambe, academics, PhD students from universities, researchers and public advisors from ARC, one of whom will be leading an interactive workshop later this morning. We'll also be hearing about the pioneering initiative of the Bay, a blueprint for recovery in Morecambe, which is a person-centered approach to well-being in nature, which offers a, new, a unique service to improve an individual's well-being whilst utilizing the beautiful coastal location of the town. So we have this panel on stage with us whose aim is to help us reflect and shape the discussion after each speaker so we can have an informed conversation which is both useful and proactive. And on the panel we have Mr Andy Curran, who's Associate Medical Director at NHS Lancashire and South Cumbria Integrated Care Board and an A&E specialist. Uh, Mr Tony Marson, or Dr Tony Marson I think, Professor of Neurology, University of Liverpool, and consultant neurologist, sorry about that, Tony, I'm just reading what's been written here, I should be more careful, <laughs> who specialises in epilepsy at the Walton Centre in Liverpool, Mr Keith Holt, who's a resident of Blackpool and a public advisor to Art Northwest and other organisations in the NHS, I have to say, who's collaborated on numerous projects with us, uh, Dr Mark Buchanan, a consultant in emergency medicine, or are you a mister? No, I'm a doctor. You're a doctor. Uh, at Wirral Hospitals, and <laughs> Dr. Dale Kirkwood, who's an emergency medicine specialist registrar at the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, and he's, sorry, he's also a Royal College of Emergency Medicine pre-doctoral fellow, and he works at the NHS Northwest Secure Data Environment as their PPIE coordinator, so that public involvement coordinator in the big data set that the NHS is building. Welcome all. Uh, right, so sorry, finished yet, apologies for this. So I'd just like to, to present a, a slide of updates from within the ARC and within the rules of pre-election guidance so you're aware of our latest progress and opportunities for the regional workforce. We've had positive response to our annual report, which is great news, and endorses the progress we've made in achieving our objectives during 2023 to March 24. We also have uh, over 300 sets of findings available via our open online Puma database for members and the public to access. That's where our papers go. That number is approaching 400 if we include those that are in press but not actually out uh, formally to be able to access but will be in the next few weeks. We've secured new funding for the Insight Scheme which is part of the NIHR Academy's new funding to support the development of careers in research for clinicians who aren't doctors or dentists, so all those nurses and allied health professionals, particularly those early in their career, to be able to undertake a master's in research at one of our local universities. So that's a, a fantastic uh, piece of work that Caroline led, and, and well done, and congratulations on getting that. It's an inter-university collaboration. Um, I think I've read that bit, yep, yeah. sorry. Um, we've also had £260,000 from NHR to support the building of our research capacity in social care across the region. Uh, this will involve a large number of funded student internships, collaboration communities for leaders in research and implementation in their organisations, what are called champions. We'll have uh, knowledge mobilisation opportunities and much more, which will hopefully build that capacity for undertaking social care research and collaborating in social care research across our region. Uh, we're already in the diary to present these opportunities at both Warrington and Lancashire hospitals and any organisation here who would want us to visit to tell their staff about these things, please do tell us more um, about what you would like us to do and we will arrange that with you. We've also launched in March the Northwest Coast Living Lab in Ageing and Dementia which is a network of our researchers who will spend time in those organisations who've signed up to that on a regular basis, getting to know the staff, getting to know the people that they look after and their carers, and building that research programme in collaboration with that. It's a model that's been running in Maastricht in Holland for 25 years, and we're the second area in England or the UK to be doing that, and one of, I think, now seven or eight of these living labs of that type across Europe. So just before we do start, I do have one last special announcement I'd like to make. Our program manager, Dr. Jane Cloak, familiar to many of you in the room, is leaving ARC at the end of July uh, to spend her time enjoying life 
and having a rest from work, and me in particular, I think. So I'd just like to formally thank her for all the hard work she's put in over a number of years to build this art. We wouldn't be here without Jane. I think that's very clear. And um, I'd like to present her as a gesture of thanks for all that she has done. There's a small bunch of flowers here. So can I ask Jane to come up to the stage, please? And I see that you've just appropriately to go with the flowers. So. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I, this is so lovely. I, it's been an absolute privilege to be part of this. It really, really has. And, um, and Mark, I, I thank you so much for having the faith in me and trust in me to, um, I, I guess, turn your vision into something which I hope is, is, is a reality. Um, you know, I, and also thank you to my amazing team, I'm being very possessive here, my amazing team, who, quite frankly, without them, a lot, many, many of these things would just not happen. Um, when I first started this role, so this is when Simon appointed me, um, I did it because I wanted to make a difference. That's what I wanted to do. And, you know, looking around the room at the, at, at, at the people that we've got here and the posters and the presentations that are coming up on the agenda. And, um, you know, I think, I, think we've, I think we've done that. And, and you'll hear later from some of our Clark PhD students as well. So that, that, that legacy of... of um, uh, you know the researchers of the future and how they are now working in a different way to help us solve some of these really quite tricky problems so um, uh, that's it really as I say it's been an absolute privilege and uh, I've I've loved working with you I've loved um, uh, and, and loved learning with you as well so thank you so much Thank you.